Uh, this is Chelsea Sexton. Are you? Are you? I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm Gavin. <laughs> I'm, I'm unimportant. This is a movie star I've got in the car with me now. And listen to the sound of that. In internal combustion. Now mm, I thought... Smell of petrol. Yeah. <laughs> if you actually wait, when the engine warms up, you can see the smoke rising gently off the... It's got a leak on the rocker here. You know the rocker cover is? It's yes. That, that bit up above and oil's escaping. And after it's been sitting for a few days, the oil sort of sits on the exhaust manifold, warms up. And the way the sunlight catches the smoke billowing out of the engine bay, it's almost beautiful. Plus that toasty pungent smell. I love smell. it. I love it. Yeah. Anyway, so what I'm doing, I thought I was being witty and taking Chelsea Sexton for a, uh, a drive in a dirty, filthy gas car. She's been spoiled driving an electric car all the way around New Zealand. But you own one. I own a gas car. All right. It is my shame. Except that in fairness, at least yours is a manual, as is mine. Oh yeah. Because, you know... But man, you can't get manuals in America very easily, can you? Not so much anymore, but mine is a very old gas car. Because it was the last vehicle I bought when I still got the GM discount when I worked for the company. And I have bought nothing since. Okay, well that's... What, what, there's many things... I don't want to take a long time because <laughs> I don't want viewers to get bored and I don't want... You too. It's not as sexy a topic of why Chelsea drives a gas car it's as you'd not, imagine. It's not, no. Well, hey, but you worked for General Motors during, I, I, I wanted to say, you know, I'll delay it. I won't dive straight into the EV1 conversation right yeah. away because, you know, you've heard this for years and I thought, I'll pace myself. But the fact is that you worked for General Motors during the production of the EV1. Yes. How was it? Such an open question, but how was it? It was and remains my dream job. <laughs> Which, which sounds really strange, but I, I worked on the EV1 program and I sold Saturn for a few years before that. But the EV1 was so much fun as a car and it was such a cool project and not at all what you'd imagine from a big behemoth company like General Motors. We function much more like a startup. Mm -hmm. And bottom line is I, found, I fell in love with electric vehicle technology there at the age of 20. And I have never stopped feeling grateful for finding something that I truly love at such a young age and being able to do it ever since. So when, when were you when the EV1 rolled out off the line, the first ones? Where uh, was when, I? When, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, how old were you? Oh, I was 20. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I was 20 when I first moved over to EV1 and stayed there until they, after they ended production and started crushing the cars. And when, where did you work before EV1? I sold Saturns in a car dealer. Okay, okay. I started selling cars at 17 to pay my way through university, thinking I would go off and be a sign language interpreter. I see. And I ended up liking that the was, cars more. I see. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, at least you didn't say I hear. I hear, I hear you. <laughs> Um, I don't know how to get out of here, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to take you for a coffee. Okay. Um, a drive through coffee, because this is car related. Right. Uh, it's from a popular restaurant from your country. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, you know, So where is the you... McDonald's? <laughs> oh, 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 you saw it through me. Okay, actually say what you will about that particular franchise. They have started making really good coffee. I believe you. So, uh... See, in New Zealand, see, I'm stopping now. You will. I'm stopping now for people crossing the road. In New Zealand, in Slovakia, you just drive. No one stops. You know, you, people will toot their horn at you if you stop for a pedestrian to cross. But in Slovakia, in New Zealand, uh, people are so confident you're going to stop, they walk straight out without even looking and catches you off guard. You've got to be really on guard with uh, pedestrians. Well, and I get chastised all the time for thinking that, that cars are going to stop for me here. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, they, they, they almost always do. Sorry, I'm going to be a bit awkward with the gear changes now because I've hurt my foot. I uh, slipped down the stairs a couple of days ago at home because unfortunately I had uh, pneumonia. Oh, that is no few, fun. a few glasses of pneumonia. And uh, it, unfortunately though, that particular strength of pneumonia uh, disorganized my coordination a little bit and I slipped down and landed on my foot. And you know, after you've got pneumonia, you seem to think, that hurt, but it's going to really hurt tomorrow. Yes. It did. Yes. It does. So, yes, don't do pneumonia, kids. Ah. So, there's not much positives to having a manual right now. But anyway, more about you. Uh, we're on recirculate, stuck behind a diesel. So, your car, you own a gas car. It is a Saturn what? It is a Saturn Ion Redline. Tell me about your Saturn Ion <laughs> Redline. It's a small little... Um, it's a, it's a small little coupe, um, two little suicide doors. Suicide doors? Yes. Uh, okay. So technically it's a four-door. And for a minute and a half, Saturn made supercharged cars. And I tend to like torque and horsepower more than anyone rightfully should. Right. And so it's a very fun car for what was then around eighteen or $20,000. 
and I have driven it ever since. But I drive so little, about five kilometers a week, <laughs> that buying an EV A isn't really in my budget because I try to do more as much advocacy and do stuff like this rather than buying myself cars. Uh, but it also isn't really justified for the mileage I do. So I'm one of those people that's on the threshold of getting rid of my car, not buying another one. But Sat when Saturn came out, weren't they were supposed to be a revolutionary new way of looking at cars? And they were at the time. Um, what made them so? Well, they were conceived as... Uh, the mission behind Saturn was primarily to start figuring out how American automakers could make cars to compete with what was then the leading Japanese uh -huh. small cars, so Honda Civics and things like that. So the car itself was not anything super special <laughs> in terms of a car, although so they had a few production innovations, including pa plastic panels that wouldn't dent and weren't uh -huh. as easily scratched, and that, things yeah. like that. But also, the, but the main thing behind Saturn was more uh, the culture mm -hmm. and the purchase experience. So it was a, the first brand to do completely no haggle pricing. Everyone that walked through the door got the same price. This is there Tesla was no bike. well. There are a lot of things that, that Tesla does that they were not the first to do, and all of that was among them. So very low pressure no haggle, um, you know, you got whatever you wanted. There was no pressure to say, we have a red one here, but you know, you really wanted a white one. If you wanted a white one, we went and found you a white one and, and all of those things. And so, yes, a lot of that kind of process became building blocks of Tesla, whether or not Tesla intended it that way. Uh, but also when the EV1 came out, they looked at who would likely buy one as GM's first electric car. It remains the only car to never have had a brand on it. It was. It only had the, the square blue GM logo. It's the only GM You're only right. car. Saturn was the logo. Not, not well, no, GM. Saturn wasn't even on the car. So the car only had the blue GM logo. But there's no such thing as a as a GM store. You had to pick a brand. And so looking at who would likely buy them, the demographic was really a Cadillac buyer. But Saturn was so known for really great customer service and this really lovely sort of buying experience that they decided in the end that the Saturn folks would be the better culture for the EV1, even though it was really a Cadillac buyer. And so that's how the EV1 ended up with Saturn. Cadillac is supposed to be rebranding itself as the all-electric luxury. They, yeah. they say they're going to, yes. The, I can't say the American Tesla because the Tesla's American, but you know, they're, right. they're, they're rebranding. Do you, do you think they have a chance? Um, well, I'm very curious. Yes, I think they could, but I don't know if they will. Oh, do you know what you want, coffee-wise? Well, I'm just going to get a latte. How can I have? This is exciting viewing. Oh, hi, can I have a uh, one regular latte, please? I won't yeah. get a, um, you, But with an extra shot of coffee? No problem. What would you like? Nothing, thank you. What? Not a juice or water or? Water's fine. <laughs> and one cup of water, please. <laughs> a cup of water? Yeah. No problem. Drive it Sorry. <laughs> You're going to make me look like a caffeine addict, and you're going to be drinking pure water. Hello. Hiya. Okay. There's an extra shot of coffee in there as well, is it? Oh, cool. Thanks. You know, Thank you. Thank you. It's really off topic, but have you noticed how cool New Zealand money it looks so cool? It does. It's really beautiful. No? Right. Our money is boring. Oh, your money's powerful. Uh, <laughs> sort of makes up for the boring part. God, this car stinks. <laughs> I can smell the fumes. Okay. So, what is it about electric cars that turn? I'm say that. That, is, <laughs> <laughs> that turns me on. Yeah. Uh, well, personally, I uh, I'm drawn to them for the performance. I like torque. I like the go fast. Um, according to Bill Nye, I don't have a lead foot. I have a lithium foot. So yeah, okay. I like the driving experience of electric, but professionally what I like about them, I mean, I always say that I, I care about EVs as the table and I care less what brings any particular person to that table. Gotcha. I like that they appeal on so many different levels so that some people will come to them for the same reason I did, but others will be because it's domestic energy or because it's cheaper to drive or be for environmental climate change, health reasons. So there's you know a slew of different things that can be appealing and I care that you get there, not what specific thing brought you here. That's a very healthy approach. Because I've always found that electric cars are no more political than a dog or a desk lamp. But people well, they don't have to be, but they exactly. become so, especially in the, United, in the US, it, it, and especially in the last several years, they have become so incredibly politicized. Yeah. Hello. Hi, oh. you cut your tire. 
effects. Not particularly. Oh, that's the water. <laughs> that's some water looking coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Cheers. Ah, ow, my encephalitic foot. Ow. Hang on, what does See, if you should get yourself one of those fancy cars that doesn't have that third pedal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that maybe runs on electrons. I will. I mean, this is a temporary car. It's, yeah, no one, no one makes a 2001 Hyundai Accent their dream car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Hyundai. They're not going to be your sponsor, are no, they? No, they're not. <laughs> oh, the traffic sucks. So, now you're from uh, where in California? Uh, I'm near Los Angeles. I'm in the only small town, I think, so how in do Los you, Angeles. See, how do you find Auckland traffic in comparison? Because I think it sucks. Uh, well, it feels a little bit like home, but, <laughs> but yours is not as bad as ours is. driving on the correct side, and I'm sure you've, you've not yeah, heard that yeah, in the last Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, stay green, stay green, You stay know, green, you with all green, the original orange, jokes. Stay orange, sorry? <laughs> you with all the original jokes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of joining the... Uh, Sarcastic Society of New Zealand. It's like we need your support. So, we've established why you like electric cars. We've talked about Saturn. Yes. What else is there? It's pretty much it, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's filled 25 of my years. Yeah. So, where do you see, like, okay, ah, now this is a question. Tesla. Yes. When you think electric cars, you think of Tesla. What's, well, what's, you what's, do. Well, you'd, you'd think that. I admire Tesla, but I n never admit to being a fanboy because they are by no Well, most perfect. fanboys wouldn't admit to being a fanboy. Well, okay, that's a fair <laughs> point. Um, but I like Tesla because they are the only one doing what they're doing right now. But that's not always going to be the case. I and think Tesla has served a couple of really interesting roles. And they, I mean, they've done a lot of great things. Um, and they serve a really aspirational role for consumers where you know those who would not have been as aware of electric vehicles or would have thought of them as more compromised than we find them to be look at that car and look at the way it may be both aesthetics and performance any of the models and aspire to it even if they'll never have one and so i think that that is incredibly useful for awareness and spread of evs and certainly their buyers have been for the most part really pretty happy and even though the, even when they're not i mean they're it's not that any of the teslas have been without their kinks but as as one of them constantly says to me but none of us would give our cars back <laughs> so there are varying degrees of super fans and, and more you know happy but less fanboyish folks involved but overall they've made a lot of people really happy and a lot of people really aspire to them um, I mean, I know that there are a lot of people that kind of give them single-handed credit for all things related to EVs, and none of us would be sitting here today if not for Tesla and all of that, and, and that tends to be a bridge too far for me, right. <laughs> because there are a variety of things that contribute to all of us being here and all the cars being here, and many of them that would exist completely outside of Tesla. Did, okay, well here's a related comment. Did the EV1 ever have all the teething problems that Tesla had? Uh, no, not well. Why? We had some, every new car, every new model generally has some infant issues and, and EV1 yeah. was no exception, especially our first generation. By our second generation, we had worked out pretty much all the kinks, but there were a couple of, of man, we had a charge port issue and a couple of things on the, on the first um, generation car. Um, I would say though that A, our, all of the EVs of the 1990s were much, much smaller programs in fairness. and. We were so focused on making customers happy that we, I mean, you had our home phone number 24 hours a day and, oh, no. and used them all the time. It's funny, I don't have Musk's number. <laughs> I do. Do you really? <laughs> Can we prank him now? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so, wouldn't ask you so to do you, that. you know, and comparatively as General Motors at a time where GM was in its kind of its heyday, yeah. we had resources to go after those infant problems in a way that was generally quicker than Tesla has been able to address some of theirs. So I don't think there's a, a fair direct comparison between the two. I think there's things that Tesla has done really well. Um, as we said earlier, they are not the first to do corporate owned stores for that matter, let alone no hassle, pr no haggle pricing or low pressure experience. All of those things existed before separating sales and service. Stores and shopping malls was a thing Saturn did as well. Did they really? Yep. Um, and various elements have been done by other automakers, but Tesla 
is the first to have combined all those elements in a really effective way that provides a really good experience. And that's all fantastic. Are they perfect as a company? No. <laughs> And that's okay to say out loud because it doesn't take away from all the good they've done. But I do find that a lot of the fans believe that if that anything short of believing Tesla is perfect means you hate them. Yes. <laughs> Which is not my They're my experience, but it is. Religion, it's Tesla. It's a little right. well, and EVs in general are a little bit of a religion, yeah. and that's fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think they're they're a great company. My husband worked there for many years. I have been involved with them off and on over the years. So you know, they're they're kind of near and dear in some ways. But there are also other people and other companies that have been working really hard on all of this for a long time and are also doing good things. So it's more of a group effort than I think some of the mainstream story conveys. So if you if someone gave you an empty an open check a signed check and said, go out and buy an electric car say now or five years from now, what would you buy? <laughs> um, it varies, but <laughs> these days um, I actually, I covet the, the Honda Urban EV concept. Really? Yeah. That, li that little I tiny know, thing that won't be available in the US, that one, which means what? I'm going to have to come here to drive it. <laughs> Why wouldn't they do that? Why wouldn't they put it in the US market? I, I'm, I don't know yet, but... Yeah, I mean, I, so personally, I like small cars, preferably performance-oriented small cars. Um, I don't need skillions of miles or kilometers of range, and that one's only meant to be about 150 miles, but that's completely fine for me. It is a good-looking car. I mean, I saw that the first time I saw it. I thought it looks like, you remember the first generation of Civic? Yes, and Golfs, yes. Yeah. And the Golf, yeah. It's got that... It's very retro, and it's, I mean, I grew up in the really old Honda Civics and stuff, but and I, it's, what's interesting is... My youngest is 20 years old, and it's the first EV that both he and I have left lusted afterwards, which means that, you know, Honda's doing something right in that regard. It's like it's electric now, basically. Perfect. Can't Actually, tell the it's a self-charging hybrid. Well, yeah, your car's it's finally zero engine. emission. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you go now that you've, you can enjoy your water. I shall. Thank you very much. It's warm outside. A little ice water's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for annoying me for 10 <laughs> minutes. Actually, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, John. Absolutely. <laughs>